squat, squat, squat. As a nation, Tonga's biggest export is squash. You know, squash. One of those fruits that you always think should be a vegetable and is famous for questionable soups and having endless varieties that are very similar and yet have more names than Tobias, Gerald, Albert, Levy and Flood. Tonga's second biggest export, however, brings the squash. A nation of chunky humans custom built to be professional rugby players, Tonga's economy is actually propped up significantly by rugby with money sent home from egg chucking patriots and expats making it Tonga's second biggest industry. Because despite having a slightly lesser population than Watford, Tonga continues to produce absurd numbers of top tier rugby players. Approximately one in every five males between 18 and 35 in Tonga is a registered member of a rugby club. Roughly the same percentage of people play rugby in Tonga as have read a Harry Potter book in the US. Rugby was introduced to Tonga in the early 20th century when a group of Irish missionaries arrived to teach at two of the biggest colleges on the islands and when they were there they went, hey guys, this is rugby and the Tongans were like, cool. And then they went, and this is religion. And the Tongans went, oh, cool. And then they taught the Tongans English so that they could say cool in a language that the missionaries understood. Tonga then played their first test match against Fiji in 1924, winning the first of what is currently 91 battles against their most frequent foe. Tonga have won 27 of those games and then the same number again from their 64 matches against Samoa. But those rivalries have always had a core of friendship, of islander solidarity that rises above the ironically tribal and wonderfully petty intensity of the rivalry England feels with pretty much everyone within a million mile radius. As such, whilst over over half of Tonga's all-time wins have come against Fiji or Samoa, the most memorable clashes have always been those between the metaphorical big boys and Tonga's literal big boys. They've never beaten the All Black Springboks, England, Wales or Ireland, and they've only ever played Argentina once, but they've pulled one past just about every other nation. In 2012, they went to Scotland and won thanks to this try by Fetu Vainicolo, who is basically the human equivalent of setting a treadmill to top speed. And in this very World Cup cycle, they've beaten Italy just a week after Italy pulled off a famous first win over South Africa. In fact, Tonga's arrival on the international stage was announced by two of such wins, beating the Mario Blacks and then, famously, in 1973, Australia. This led to them booking a tour of the British Isles the following year, and even though they lost all the tests, it was here that they developed their reputation and secured their place as a team worth playing. After playing Wales at the post-game dinner, everyone's favourite numerously obsessed chipmunk Jonathan Jiffy Davis described them as the hardest and most unpleasant team to play he'd ever faced. Their reputation was thus, if a Tongan hit you, you stayed hit. This reputation saw Tonga invited to the first World Cup and they've qualified for eight of the nine since. Whilst they've never made it out of the pools, they have nonetheless been at the centre of some of the great World Cup moments down the years. They squeaked a dramatic win over a very good Italy team in 1999, pushed Wales in 2003 to the extent that Wales needed this drop goal by Martin Williams in order to win it, and then had possibly their best tournament to date in 2011. They were a lot of fun in their opening game against New Zealand with murder ball loose head zone Malolo wrecking Dan Carter like this and then going on to score himself phases later. They then showed style in a big win over Japan, grit in a narrow loss to Canada and then put it all together for a showstopper finale as they beat France in the final pool game. That France team went on to only lose the final by one point and Tonga beat them by five, which officially means that Tonga won the 2011 Rugby World Cup. 2015, however, was slightly tougher for Tonga, only beating Namibia and suffering substantial loss against Argentina and New Zealand after losing their opening round game to a glorious Georgia team that were just playing their hearts out. And that's what it took, because that's what Tonga themselves bring to every game. They're far from the best funded, and their population means that no matter what percentage takes up the sport, they're going to struggle to develop enough world-class players to win a World Cup, especially with the growth of rugby league in Tonga in the last 10 years. However, nothing can and nothing will ever stop the Tongans from giving their all. And whereas Watford's contribution to rugby is Josh Lucy and three of the Saracen Six fans, Tonga has produced so many great rugby players. However, this has meant their biggest struggle has been holding on to them. For decades now, it's almost been tradition for foreign teams to field a Tongan. Current stars include beloved silent saint of workmanship Talupe Falatau, the Walshish Tongans to ever play for England, Mako and Billy Vinopola, and the un fairly talented Charles Piatal, who were not only all qualified for Tonga, but all have family who've actually played for Tonga itself. And this isn't a new ordeal either. There have been plenty of former internationals with Tongan heritage, such as Jonah Lomu and Israel Falau. 
And yet, there will still be plenty of enormously talented players who will be part of Tonga's World Cup assault this year. Most notably, one of the few Tigers who didn't lose their bite this season, fullback and wing, Talusa Vianu. Never mind a phone box, Vianu could beat a man on the space on top of an iPhone. His feet hotter than a malfunctioning Samsung. He beats players so easily they look silly for even trying, even thinking about tackling him. In fact, he's so glorious to watch. I'm just going to keep rambling on so I have more reason to show more clips of him doing mad things with his feet and just beating people and scoring tries and just doing rugby because I think that letting people watch Vianu play with the ball in hand is a public service and I deserve to be applauded for just letting you watch Vianu do this. The other truly crucial player for this Tonga team is another alum of the bottom half of the Premiership this season in the form of Newcastle Falcons' Sonatane Takalua. Takalua has undeniable talent, but the reason he stands out is because he simply has the smartest rugby brain across the islands of Tonga. He has an innate rugby understanding, from tactics to support lines, that has kept Falcons and Tongans in the game when they really should have been outmaneuvered. And if Tonga are to push in a very competitive pool, they're going to need his 4D chess brain to link up with their other assets, including Vianu's extra-dimensional feet, the majestic carrying and handling of uber-destructive number 8, Sioni Valanu, and the sage old head nous and 10 year test career of ever calm fly half Kurt Jesus he's still playing Maraf and Maraf's still playing because as a nation Tonga don't really quit they don't lie down and die they keep coming at you they keep hitting you and you keep staying hit this year they're drawn with England Argentina France and the USA three tier one nations and the most improved tier two side in this four-year world cup cycle it's a hell of a tough draw but you can guarantee even if Tonga don't cause another upset even if that French team turns up it won't be only one in five players giving it their absolute all Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a really lovely day up until watching it. And this has just continued what is a going to be a day you remember for the rest of your life. I hope it goes on to become a really, really wonderful day from here on out. It just gets better and better and better as it goes. I also hope everyone that supports me on Patreon knows how much I appreciate it from just the bottom of my heart, which I'm not very good at biology, but I assume is somewhere about like here. Um, it's, yeah. Um, I also want, uh, because I couldn't make a video on Tonga without including it, to put in the following clip, which is, so the last minute of France v Tonga 2011. Tonga won. Tonga got it wrapped up, but France come within seven, and they've got a shot in the post to put them within that. They qualify for the knockout stages. They turn down the shot goal to take a scrum under the posts. When Tonga have been loving the scrum, they've smashed them on a couple of times during that game. France started to get a bit of an edge, but there we go. And then we hear, you hear the, ref, the, the commentary is very apt for any moment a French team has ever put in. But listen underneath to the players, to specifically Sonata Tamalolo on the ref mic. Here we are. Looks like they're going for a scrum. They're going for a scrum. It's unbelievable. What are they thinking? They've completely lost the plot. 